If you've ever daydreamed about starting a side hustle to quit your job or are looking for you know different avenues to support your family, bring in side income, then it's gonna be the straight up OBS, right to the point video explaining exactly how we did it. Whoa, whoa. Here I come. Oh, here I come. I'm going to be showing you how our brand new Shopify store generated a little over $100,000 in profit in just over four months after opening. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Chris Ekman. I've been doing e-commerce for about seven years. Tried every different model under the sun at this point. Done a little over $25 million in sales and to make those lessons accessible to everybody. So this is a store that we started back in July and around mid-December is when it crossed the $100,000 profit mark. And during that time, my wife and I were both spending a handful of hours running the business. We both do a bunch of other stuff and so we don't have a ton of time, which works out because this business model doesn't require a ton of time, doesn't require a lot of money to get started. And before we see like what the business is and how it works, I want to touch on something that I think is clouding the side hustle space, like on YouTube and just in general. And that is this notion of a side hustle being, oh, I put in two or four hours per week and I make an extra two to four grand per month in, you know, passive side hustle income. And while yes, that outcome is possible, X number of hours for X number of dollars, the real equation is the value that's being provided to your customer. So the real question is not how little time can I put in for the most amount of money? It is what is the opportunity that will allow me? What's the vehicle in the middle here that when I input time, it creates X amount of value for customers. So it's not trading two hours for two grand, it's two hours into this opportunity that creates $2,000 worth of value for your customers. And that's where I think a lot of people, myself included, would get hung up thinking of it as just time in, money out. Whereas the real formula is what I just described. That's why this opportunity or this vehicle is so exciting is that the inputs on your end is time, money if you have it, and the third is experience. And the experience is the thing that I'm hopefully bringing to the table here is that I've done this for seven years. I've trialed and error every different way you could run this business. And what I'm about to share with you, I believe to be the best model. So in doing that mental exercise of what is the opportunity that we can put time into and generate value for customers or users or clients, whatever type of business you're running, I've tried social media marketing agency, I've tried like one-on-one -on -one coaching and e-commerce has been the one that I've consistently come back to because of a couple of reasons. Primarily, it's the one that allows me to maintain whatever lifestyle I want in the easiest fashion. Like I work on the business when I want, if I want, and there's no boss there to tell me otherwise. Second is that it's scalable and it's building an actual asset that can be sold. Marketing agencies, client services, not really an asset that can be sold. Whereas an e-commerce business, when built the right way, it can be sold for multiples on your trailing 12 profit, which we'll talk about later. And the third is that it's just fun and it's a creative outlet that allows you to actually build something that you can show off to your friends and family, that sort of thing. And it builds a skill set that is extremely valuable in a number of different ways. Everything from marketing to site optimization to product research, to financials, operations, back end, you build out a really comprehensive skill set that applies to a lot of different areas and like future opportunities. Whereas if you just do like social media marketing, you might just learn like client relations and how to run Facebook ads. With e-commerce, you learn everything. Like you have to learn all these different areas, but in a manageable way. So e-commerce is what we use to generate $100,000 in profit within the first couple of months. But there's a lot of different strains of e-commerce, right? Like there's drop shipping, there's Alibaba, there's ordering inventory. And luckily I've done all of them. I've sold everything from socks to jewelry, to yoga mats, uh, to t-shirts, to home goods and like wall art, pretty much anything you can sell. I've done it at some point. And the model that I've come back to time and time again is print on demand. And the reason for that is that unlike drop shipping, where you're just selling, basically reselling the same stuff from Alibaba that everybody else on TikTok and Facebook is, is print on demand gives you the flexibility to very easily create unique and proprietary products that are only sold on your site. And the value in that is doubled because not only are you providing like proprietary 
proprietary unique products, but you also have fulfillment providers or printers in the countries of each of your customers, meaning that none of your customers have to wait, you know, six weeks to never to get their products. They are getting them within two to three days. So they're getting unique, high quality products that are like QA tested. They're getting them fast within like two to three days ship out time. And those two things alone results in a customer that wants to come back and buy from you again and again. Because the thing that has changed more than ever in the e-commerce landscape is costs will continue to go up with Facebook ads as it gets more competitive and there'll be more and more sites trying to do this. But the way that you can defend yourself against that is by building a lifetime value, your LTV of your customer, building a relationship, especially as AI is seemingly taking over the world. The thing that is going to help brands win in the long term are the brands that are able to differentiate themselves through their customer experience that map boosts the lifetime value. Basically, just run a good business, run a business that people like and is not just focused on the cash flow. And ironically enough, that is the business that will bring in the most cash flow. If you focus on just like, and I've done this in the past, if you focus on just drop shipping, like the most profitable products that bring in quick cash. Here comes the money. Money, 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 money. <laughs> like, yes, that can work, but it is a very, it's a short burst and it's not a long-term like sustainable income, which that's our goal here. We want something that we invest the time into now and we're still getting paid for months and years down the road. And that's the kind of business that we built here. And it did a hundred grand profit in the first four or five months. And it's going to continue to do that every four or five months for till we decide to either sell it or do something else. And so the way that we build these businesses, it's relatively straightforward. I can say that being on the opposite end of the learning curve, I know on the front end and seem like there's a million variables, but if you listen to this and just focus on what I'm about to tell you, you will have everything you need. You'll have your true North, your North star to return to as you're learning and approaching this whole side hustle and starting your own business type of endeavor. And those things are number one, your niche or your market, focusing on who you want to be serving, what's your client base going to be. And if you're like me when I was younger and you say, I don't care who I'm selling to, I just want to make money, stop and really think about that and go back to what we said at the beginning, that a side hustle is not about you. It's not about how much money or how much time you can put in to get out in terms of dollars. It's about how much time you can put in time, experience or money into an opportunity or a vehicle that yields X number of dollars in value to your customers. That's what we're really talking about here. And a really important part about identifying that vehicle or the opportunity in the middle here is knowing who you're going to be serving. If you don't care about that and you're just trying to jumpstart the process, I can promise you it's going to come back and bite you later on down the road. So first is the niche, deciding who you want to serve. And the easiest way that I do this is by writing down a list of hobbies or interests or audiences that I myself would be in, like yoga, coffee, ice hockey, personal development, working out, stuff like that. And then I do what's called the bumper sticker test. Very easy test that you can just do this on the back of a napkin. Think of out of all the things on your list, what are the things that you've seen on the back of somebody's car, aka a bumper sticker? And the reason we do this is that if somebody is sporting that topic, or interest on the back of their car or, you know, on a piece of jewelry, or even maybe you've even seen it on a t-shirt, then that is a good sign that that's something that they, an area that they're interested in enough and that they are proud of that they would buy products for it to show off to other people that, Hey, they're interested in that. And they do that and they identify with that audience. So that's why the niche is important. And then the second piece, and this is where the product or the model that you're using comes into play is what product are you going to put in front of them? You can do drop shipping. You can order products from China uh, or from wherever, like taking the yoga stay example, say I want to serve people who like yoga. Now, what products could you put in front of them? A lot of beginner entrepreneurs have this idea, myself included again, of I'm going to invent something brand new that the world's never seen before, which yeah, there's a place for that could work. But if our goal is side hustle, we want to put in the least amount of effort into this opportunity or vehicle. The best way to do that is to use a vehicle that is proven and has stood the test of time. And in our case, and what I've been selling for years and years is t-shirts, t-shirts, apparel, home decor. It's people are going to keep buying it for years and years to come. And actually graphic tees in particular, it's on an upward trend and it's expected to be a booming market for like the next 10 years. I think that projected it out to like 2034, like 15 to 20% growth year over year. So t-shirts is an amazing place to get started and you can build out your product catalog further on down the line. Like Yoga State, we started off with t-shirts and then 
then added in yoga mats, like fitness bands, yoga pants, all kinds of other products down the road. But we started off with t-shirts. And the reason we did that is that we were able to get started with basically no money. We just created our own designs based on what we saw was popular in the market. Like we go on Amazon, Etsy, Pinterest, see what styles of designs people are wearing. Like to give a concrete example, in the yoga space, people love these like mandala style t-shirts that were monocolored, like white or black design. And it just represented something to like the yogi culture. And then on the flip side, there were also like typography designs we saw doing well that were like funny sayings, like I heart yoga and maybe three people and take note of like, what is it out there that people are buying? And then we create, come up with our own designs. And we're just trying to come up with like basically 40 to 50 designs to begin with. And we download the PNG file to our computers and then you upload it into something that's called Printify. And Printify print packs and ships all of your orders directly to the end customer. So to give you rough back of the napkin math again, they charge us about $13 for a one product order. And we charge about $31 for to the customer to fulfill that. And then we're just left making the profit in between. And it's that kind of model that allows us to work from anywhere in the world from literally just our laptops, never step foot in a warehouse, never have to worry about shipping delays and misprints and stuff. All of that is handled by Printify. All that we do is come up with the designs and make the money in between. And now that the design process used to be like we go on Upwork and Fiverr and hire a designer, go back and forth, cost hundreds of dollars, if not more. And it's a long process. Nowadays, though, with the advent of AI, it's like a blessing for this industry. It has lowered the barrier to entry so drastically. It's bizarre to me that more people haven't gotten into this because now you can do the exact same process and then create those designs using something like Midjourney or Dolly. And once you have those, you download the PNG file, you remove the background using something like ClipDrop, and then you upload it to print. And if you're interested in learning like a lot more about this, I did a really in-depth tutorial about this process step-by-step step that you can watch over here. And you're welcome to join us in the free school community, the link down below. The way that this business gets really scalable and sustainable is when you focus heavily on choosing the right niche, making great designs and products that people like. And then you do the third part, which is the marketing. Now the marketing, if you have 500 to a thousand bucks to invest, the best route and the route that I always go is using Facebook ads. Now I've done really detailed training on that as well, but with Facebook ads, it's still by far the best place to get traffic, even with TikTok and Snapchat and all these other platforms. Now, Facebook is the platform that everybody's on. Doesn't matter what age or demographic you are, everybody's audience is there. And and you can launch very basic testing campaigns. So you have your 50 designs, put them on a basic Shopify store, which you don't even have to edit the Shopify store that much. You just basic Shopify store, launch the testing ads with 25 or $50 a day budget, and you see what the results are. The results generally that we look for are like 50 to 75 cent cost per link clicks. And if we're seeing that people are clicking on the ads, they're interested, then that's a really good sign for us to double down and make even more designs. We just go back to Midjourney or Dolly and make more designs designs like the ones that people are clicking on. That's pretty much the iterative process that we follow for like the first four to six weeks. It's just looking at the data and then making more designs like the best sellers. Or if you don't have any sales, at least like the ones that people are clicking on the most. And then after that four to six week sprint, basically, you will have a store and a design catalog that looks completely different than when you started. Because when you started, it was just like kind of finger in the wind, look at the best sellers and, you know, hope for the best. And that's kind of where people will normally stop. And that's why their stores will fail. They put up the 50 designs and then, you know, they don't get immediate like million dollar sales and they get discouraged, which I totally understand. I've been there, but that's the time where you have to double down. That is like the barrier that it's the epitome of if it was easy, then everybody would be doing it. And if everybody was doing it, then it wouldn't be an opportunity, just basic supply and demand. If there wasn't a cost associated with making this work, then you know everybody would be doing it. If you take anything from this video, it's like at that point of after you launch and you've done a little bit of testing, that is like the point of no return where you have to burn the boats and decide that you are going to make this work no matter what. Once you get past that, that if I hadn't pushed past that point, I would be in a nine to five job or I don't even know where I would be. But the biggest lesson I learned is pushing past that point is where the money is really made. Now, it doesn't mean like if you have a losing store, just keep doubling down and doubling down. It just means you either win or you learn. 
and you continue doing that over and over and over again. You're very active, especially in those first four to six weeks. Because once you get past that and you have a catalog of, I don't know, 100 to 150 designs, that's when you can start doing the others and you validated the niche. That's when you can start doing other stuff like building out your email automations and all the other things that are going to lay the foundation so that by the time you hit like month three ish, you're pretty much able to put in an hour a day, two hours a day max if you want to. And you'll continue to see your sales rise like 15 to 20 percent uh, month over month. Now, obviously, it's not always that straightforward, but that's roughly the process that we followed and it's worked extremely well. But the, the caveat that I would say for anyone who's considering starting this business or going the side hustle route at all, maybe not so much a caveat, but a warning is to stay focused. Do one opportunity. There's a ton of vehicles out there that the time in vehicle equals, you know, the value you're creating and the value you get in return. There's a lot of vehicles out there. Just pick one. I don't care if it's print on demand or if it's drop shipping or if it's social media marketing agency, just pick one and stick to it. I'm partial to print on demand because that's what I've had the most success in. And even after trying, you know, buying inventory and holding it, just like so much less of a headache. So that's why I go that route. But whatever you end up deciding, just pick one way and stick with it. And don't fall victim to the grass is always greener syndrome because it's such a fallacy that I've fallen into the trap of so many times. So just pick one route and stick to it. Learn the skill set. Join us in the school community if you want to learn more about starting your Shopify brand and growing it to the point that you too can potentially do 100 grand profit in the first four or five months. That's the whole goal. The community is helping people hit that point. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. It helps the YouTube algorithm learn about you and learns that there's something valuable in this video. So I appreciate it. Let me know in the comments section what was the most valuable for you in this video so I can talk more about it. And if you have any comments or questions, I'd love to hear them as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.